Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motor news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the significance of no-contact apprehension in Manila. Our road safety reminder in the Yonge Street Sports Portion centers on right-of-way rules for turning vehicles. This week's Spying to Pedal shall be about the importance of respecting pedestrians. Showcase this week shall have the subcompact sedan from Toyota, the 2022 Vios GRS. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Strata Athlete. Unleash the athlete. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. The Department of Public Works and Highways Region 5 office reports that the 15.87 km Albay Sorsogon Connector Road, also known as the Bacon Manito Road, is near completion. In his report on the project, DPWH Region 5 Director Virgilio Edbarte said locals and visitors will be able to soon utilize the all-weather road as it targets its completion before the end of this year. When fully completed, the Albay Sorsogon Connector Road will reduce travel time of motors between the two provinces by one hour and will benefit as many as 5,000 motors daily, he added. The opening of the road, which directly connects Legaspi City to Punta de Jesus Road in Albay and Junction Sorsogon, Bacon Manita Road in Sorsogon. Opening this new connector road to motorists is seen to improve the economic condition of areas along its route. The DPW said it is committed to complete the connector and has requested an additional 500 million pesos to cover building active and passive slow protection systems and metal guardrails. New Department of Public Works and Highway Secretary Manuel Bonoan has confirmed that the Samal Island Davao City Connector Project, one of the flagship projects under the Build 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 program of the Duterte administration, will push through. The project was recently officially launched in ceremonies attended by Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi, Ambassador to the Philippines Wang Silian, Department of Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique A. Manalo, and DPW Secretary Manuel Bonoan, and Under Secretary Emil K. Sadeyin. The project will see a 3.98km bridge with four lanes connecting the Samal Circumferential Road in Barangay Limao, Island Garden City of Samal to Davao City in between Artestillo to Ang Maharlika Junction. The bridge crossing over Pakiputan Strait will be 24 meters wide and will have a vertical navigational clearance of up to 47 meters. The toll-free bridge funded by official development assistance from China to the tune of 23 billion pesos is expected to begin construction this year and is targeted for completion in 2027. Once completed, motorists can drive from Davao City to Samal in around 5 minutes. The North Luzon Expressway has announced that the Enlex Candaba Viaduct will be undergoing major repair. The Enlex said that the repairs include an urgent major safety upgrade of the southbound portion of the Candaba Viaduct. Enlex said its engineering consultant, AHF Philippines, reported that the southbound viaduct is still being adversely affected by heavy loads. 
there's an immediate need to restrict the weight of vehicles traveling on the viaduct while repair and retrofitting work is being undertaken, Alex added. Motorists are advised to take two recommended alternate routes. Lang interchange of the Cavite Laguna Expressway or Calax will be open to motorists before the end of the year. This will extend the operational sections of the Calax from Amplasan and Laguna to the Aguinaldo Highway in Silang, Cavite, operators of the tollway said. The Silang interchange is more than half complete as of July 11, with drainage and bridge construction, excavation, and roadway earthworks, as well as installation of fence and coconuts, still needing to be completed. The Silang interchange can serve as another alternate exit for motorists bound for Tagaita aside from the Santa Rosa Tagaita Road interchange, according to the tollway operators. Conversely, it could be another alternate entry point into the Calax for those looking to get into the South Luzon Expressway at Mamplasa. The Silang interchange is also seen to help decongest the 41 km Emilio Aguinaldo Highway, the busiest thoroughfare in the province of Cavite. The Calax is targeting to open more interchanges by next year. When completed, the Calax can serve as a direct link between the S-Flex and the Manila Cavite Expressway or the Cavitex from Mamplasa to Cavite in Cavite. Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motor Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. Like Quezon City authorities, the Manila City government implements its own no-camera apprehension program to cite and find those recorded to have violated traffic rules and regulations. In essence, Manila's NCAP is similar to Quezon City's NCAP, which relies on cameras and other surveillance equipment to monitor and record traffic rules violations. License plates of vehicles whose drivers commit traffic violations are captured in photo or video, and a notice of violation or NOV is generated and sent to the registered owner of the vehicle based on the database of the Land Transportation Office. Manila City also has its Traffic Adjudication Board, with whom motorists can contest NOVs. Fines can also be settled online or over-the-counter at authorized payment centers or in person at the Manila City Hall. Manila City's NCAP has been in place as early as December 2020 and already has a dedicated website where vehicle owners can run a check on their license plate to check for any violations. Manila also has a Facebook page that provides updates on its NCAP. The website and Facebook can be particularly useful for those buying vehicles from their previous owners. The city government recently announced that requests for a copy of a notice of violation may now be made via email sent to ncap at manila.gov.ph. Requests sent to the ncap at manila.gov.ph must contain the following. Official receipt and certificate of registration of the vehicle. Affidavit stating the person requesting for the NOV is the registered owner of the vehicle or photograph of the registered owner holding a government-issued ID. Government-issued ID with picture of the registered owner. If registered owner is a corporation, board resolution, or secretary certificate authorizing the requesting person to secure a copy of the NOV. Buyers of vehicles with pending transfers of LTO registration to their names can also request copies of NOVs. The requirements are the following. Notarize deed of sale of vehicle. If seller transfer is a corporation, board resolution or secretary certificate confirming the signatory's authority to execute the deed of sale on behalf of the corporation. Affidavit stating that the person requesting the NOV is the buyer or transferee, the new owner and the actual possessor of the vehicle, or photograph of the buyer transferee holding a government-issued ID. Government-issued ID of the buyer or transferee. If buyer or transferee is a corporation, board resolution or secretary's certificate authorizing the requesting person to secure a copy of the NOV. a destination nor a finish line it's what you keep racing towards to push to the extremes to race 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 that's when you find the limit that's our ambition so you too can race yours Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Oh, 
Seven Seater in style. You are back with us here on Motoring Today. You now have this week's valuable motoring tip. Starting off with some rotate gear reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. If you are driving on the main road and you're turning left or right, paunahin muna ang kasalubong na sasakyan na padiretso ang takbo. Iwasang matapag-unahan para hindi makaabala sa ibang motorista. This way, you can avoid getting hurt too. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Flying Chupere this week. Payong Chuper lang, kaibigan. Ako po si Ka Jojo Martin, isang kapo nyo, Chuper. Bigyang prioridad ang mga pedestrian. Matutong magbigay daan sa mga tumatawid na pedestrian, lalo na sa mga bata at matatanda. Tumigil sandali at huwag magmadali. Maging mapagpasensya upang makaiwas na rin sa disgrasya. Siguraduhin na buo ang iyong atensyon sa pagmamaneho at sa lahat ng nasa paligid mo. Bukod sa iyong mga pasahero, huwag rin kalimutang irespeto ang mga tao sa labas ng sasakyan. Ito po si Ka Jojo Martin, payong chopper lang kaibigan, mula sa isang kapon yung chopper. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race. Race, race, that's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. When we do what we love, and love what we do, work is play. Ford Ranger, live the Ranger life. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. In Motorsports News, Ryan C. outfought Joshua David Marquez at a fierce duel for top honors in the junior class in Round 2 of the 2022 ROK GP Super Karting Series held last July 9 at the Clark International Speedway Karting Track. After 12 laps of wheel-to-wheel -wheel exchanges, C crossed the line just 172 thousandths of a second ahead of Marquez. Joining the duo on the podium was Bernardo Scorpino, who finished 1.429 seconds after the winner. Round 3 was also held on the same race day. This time, it was Danzel Waitan and Bernardo Corpino who was battling for the win. Danzel Waitan, who finished 4th in Round 2, won that duel, piping Corpino by 1.24 thousandths of a second ahead to take the checkered flag. Coming in a close second was second round winner Ryan C. Gabriel Carag ruled the ROK Senior Master Veteran Round 2 final race, crossing the finish line after 16 laps, just 439 thousandths of a second, ahead of Manuel Rafael Caceres in P2. Saraya Quinones ended up third. Miguel Quinones topped the qualifying heat of Round 3, handily winning the Rock Master Veteran race ahead of Junji Natori in second and Manuel Rafael Caceres in third. In the final heat of Round 3, Miguel Quinones again dominated the Rock Master Veteran race, crossing the finish line more than 4 seconds ahead of Gabriel Carag, who piped Junji Natori in third. And that is this world of four sports. We'll be back after this short break. <laughs>
Team US. Take the lead. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. This edition of Showcase takes a look at the 2022 Toyota Vios GRS, the top-of-the-line variant of Toyota's best-selling subcompact sedan. After it was first rolled out, the Toyota Vios earned a reputation as a practical, affordable, and reliable subcompact sedan. A suitable entry-level Toyota with all the accompanying attributes attached to the country's number one car brand. Later on, the Vios added Sporty to its rep, earned on the track through the Vios Cup. Lately, Toyota seeks to reinforce that Sporty rep with a 2022 Toyota Vios GRS. that it does with the Gazoo Racing-inspired aero kit and add-on that adds a few millimeters to the Vios, making the GRS variant 4,467 millimeters long, 1,730 millimeters wide, and 1,475 millimeters tall. The Vios GRS exudes a sporty vibe with front bumper skirt, side skirt, and rear bumper skirt, as well as the rear spoiler and especially the piano black mesh type grille. It shares the three-tier LED headlamp found in the Vios 1.5G variant as well as the rear LED combination lamps with line guide, LED front fog lamps, fin type antenna in the 16-inch alloy wheels with the 195-50 R16 tires. The Vios GRS can also be distinguished by the piano black outer mirrors with the integrated side turn lamps and outside grip type door handle. The piano black exterior accents certainly look quite sporty in the Vios GRS in the super red V color. The GRS also comes in white pearl crystal shine and black one. In here, the VS GRS also got the sporty treatment using suede and synthetic leather with stitching for the seats and real leather, again with stitching for the steering wheel and the shift lever and knob. The Optitron meter gauge on the instrument panel with the 4.2 TFT multi-information display also looks quite sporty. Toyota made sure the Vios GRS doesn't lack for the comfort and convenience features also found in the competition. It's got wireless door locks with smart entry system as well as a push-button start. It's got speed-sensing power door locks, power windows, and power retractable outer windows, as well as automatic air conditioning. The infotainment system should not disappoint even though it only has a 6.75-inch display, but it does have AM-FM radio, auxiliary and USB ports, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto, SDL, voice command, and 6 speakers. As found by Vios Cup racers, Toyota Subcup accident can be quite a performer on the track as well as on city streets, highways, and twisty mountain roads. The 2022 Vios 1.5 GRS is powered by the 2NRFE 1496cc inline 4 DOHC gasoline engine, a dual VVTI at 16 valves that generates 107 PS and maxes out at 140 Nm of torque. The engine is mated to a 10 continuously variable transmission with sequential control that sends power and torque to the front wheels. On the GRS, the driver can select two drive modes, Eco to save on fuel and Sport for more spirited driving. Paddle shifters give the driver greater control over gear shifts, quite handy in situations like steep inclines and drops. The steering wheel column tilts to aid in finding comfortable and optimum driving positions. The steering wheel also comes with controls for audio. The VIA suspension system features the standard front McPherson strut and rear torsion beam combo. The VS GRS uses brake discs on all four wheels, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. Toyota also also equipped the Vios 1.5 GRS with driver assist and safety features enough to stay with the competition. These include anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, hill start assist, and vehicle stability control. Also added to the GRS are SRS airbags for driver and front seat passenger, side airbags, as well as curtain shield and knee airbags. It also comes standard with child lock, isofix, and teether anchors, as well as three-point seat bus for five. Toyota Vios GRS got its gazoo racing thrill to the perfectly practical, reliable, safe, and comfortable subcompact sedan. It 
it is now difficult to stand out in the all too crowded local subcompact sedan market. But Toyota has done enough with the Vios 1.5 GRS to remain among the top choices in a segment for buyers. That's our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Garrity. Drive worry free with Prudential Garrity's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance, included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car, wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program, 100% worry-free driving. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. The Light Ace is back as a light commercial vehicle that Toyota is touting as a reliable business partner for Filipino business owners and entrepreneurs. To emphasize this point, the all-new Light Ace was launched at the Farmers Plaza in Quezon City, one of the busiest commercial centers and marketplaces in the country. Toyota's goal really is to create mobility for all, and this all-new Toyota Light Ace serves that purpose. And with the pickup and the panel van being introduced today to the public, then that gives more options to our customers, especially the MSMEs, who would require such vehicle for their businesses. Two variants of the Lightest are now available. The pickup with an open bed for fast and flexible loading and the panel van with sliding enclosure for a more secure cargo transport. Today we are actually showcasing a lot of variants. However, what will be available in our dealership would be the pickup and the panel van for now. And in the next few months, we will be introducing the others, like the utility van and the aluminum van. Powered by a 1.5-liter gasoline engine with 5-speed manual transmission, the pickup Light Ace retails at 570,000 pesos, the panel van Light Ace at 655,000 pesos. Making it more affordable, Toyota Financial Services Philippines is offering unique financing packages for the Light Ace that allow customers to acquire units under a weekly payment scheme and rates that go as low as 2,903 per week for a pickup variant. Just a few months after it was launched globally, the all-new Range Rover is now in the country. Coventry Motors Corporation, sole authorized distributor of Land Rover vehicles, parts, and accessories in the country, has brought in two variants of the all-new Range Rover, the HSE and the Autobiography. So today we're launching the all-new Range Rover, so which is our largest vehicle that we produce. It's our most luxurious vehicle. Um, it of course has all the Land Rover credentials of being fantastic off-road, but this car particularly also excels at an on-road experience. It's a luxury premium SUV. The new Range Rover brought to the country comes in either standard or long wheelbase. They're also available in petrol, diesel, or hybrid powertrains. The new Range Rover is just one of the many Land Rover and Range Rover models that will be rolled out locally. There's a huge amount coming over the next few years. Um, I shan't tell you everything, but suffice to say, the brand is on a transition journey right now. Um, and that transition really, you've seen it globally. We are changing the way that we are powering our cars. We're moving away from normal engines, petrols and diesels, moving into the full electric space environment. Land Rover and Range Rover are already on that journey. This car is testament. We will launch a full electric version in 2025. 
and then the brand will slowly transition all the other models in the range over the coming five years. So by the end of this decade for the Philippines, we will have transitioned into a complete electric lineup by 2030. After months of laying the groundwork for its first offering into the local EV market, WM Motor Philippines has officially launched a Waltmeister W5, a fully electric SUV crossover. At the launch, WM Motor Philippines President Rashid Delgado laid out the plan to grow the EV market in the country. So WM Motor Philippines is the Philippine distributor for WM Motor from China. WM Motor is a pure play electric vehicle manufacturer and we as WM Motor Philippines will be uh, distributing uh, WM Motor Philipp, uh, products in the Philippines. Starting with the W5, we will also be setting up uh, not only our own WM uh, dealerships, but we'll also have our charging station networks, as well as after sales service center to support the cars in the future. Groundbreaking ceremonies were held for the construction of the WM Motor Lifestyle Hub and Service Center of the AFP RSBS Industrial Park in Western Bikutan, Taking City. The Lifestyle Hub and Service Center is a manifestation of WM Motor Philippines advocacy to champion sustainable innovation through the science and technology of electric vehicles. We're hopeful that, uh, of course, that, that the market you know, and the Filipino consumer starts to be more aware of electric vehicles, the advantages that it brings compared to ICE vehicles, especially in terms of zero emissions or a positive impact on the environment but also because electric vehicles offer some advantages over IC in terms of the cost of ownership, especially at a time where we're all faced with rising fuel prices. The cost of charging an EV is actually quite competitive compared to fueling your car now. We feel that uh, the consumer embraces the technology and understands the advantages. We feel that there's a bright future for WM Philippines. Muscle car enthusiasts and aficionados got to hang out and enjoy a fun day on the road during the first ever Dodge Drive. Hosted by the Auto Nation Group, local exclusive distributor for Dodge in the Philippines, the event brought together members of the Dodge Muscle Car Club, the Manila GTR Owners Club, the HB Club of the Philippines, and INI Mods for a fun drive north of the metro on board Dodge vehicles. Among the highlights of the Dodge Drive was an exclusive jaunt and photo op at the still to be opened Sokovia Bridge. It was not all fun and games. The Dodge Drive itinerary included a meetup with peeps from Analux Corporation for a special highway traffic safety course meant to generate awareness for safe driving and the proper use of highways and expressways. This is meant to highlight how Dodge defines power and performance as a way to educate and grow a new generation of better owners and better drivers. Until the end of the month, the Volkswagen Santana MTA in Lovida can be had with an exclusive zero down payment financing plan from BPI. Not only that, the exclusive promo also provides for a free chattel mortgage and a 20% cash back. Aside from making the Santana and the La Vida affordable, Volkswagen Philippines also provides for 100,000 km or 3-year warranty as well as free 1-year 24-7 emergency roadside assistance. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 36th year of continuing service to the General Motoring Public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy Motoring! motoring.